Okay, so when you're thinking about doing a review, you need to negotiate with your reviewer what you want as an outcome. And so it depends on what you want it for. Maybe you just want to improve your own practice, but maybe you want it because you're going to be applying for promotion or for you know, a teaching award or something. Um, in which case, you might want a more formal output and that might shape the kind of feedback that they give you or the tone of it. Uh, so, I don't know, I guess what you need to do is work that out between each other. I mean, some departments have formal programs where there is an evaluator who's looking for specific things and going to give you feedback on those things, whatever, whatever you're teaching about and whatever your interests are. But in lots of other cases, you're going to, I mean, it should be an opportunity to, to tell the evaluator or your reviewer or your peer what you want to get out of it. What are your concerns about teaching? You know, um, when I, you know, got uh, some peer review done for me, it was because I was teaching in a big classroom and I was really unsure of how that was coming off in a big lecture theater. Uh, because that was new to me. You know, I'd done a lot of seminar teaching, but I hadn't done teaching in a big lecture theater and I wanted to know, you know, is what I'm doing working for this space? So then they can be attuned to those specific issues that you've got that are your concerns. And then they can also bring up other things that are, you know, whatever, whatever else they notice that you might not have even been thinking about. I mean, that's what's really valuable too, right, is you, they'll notice things that never even occurred to you. So something that really matters in both, you know, the way you structure your, your feedback and your review and the kind of stuff that you can expect to get out of it, the feedback, um, what, what makes a difference is the, the hierarchies that are there or the status between you and the person who's reviewing you. I've had both experiences. I've had, you know, somebody who is quite high ranking come in to give me feedback and that can be like a little nerve wracking, you know, you feel like you better perform really, <laughs> really well for them. Uh, I found that I was able to just tune out that presence after a little while, but in the beginning, boy, it made my nerves run. Uh, but you can also get people who like other, s you can get students who aren't your students, you know, but from another discipline or department to come in and give you feedback. And I found that you get, you get really different feedback from those people. The, the more high-ranking people, or say your colleagues who, who are also thinking about pedagogy with you, they, they tend to be looking for the same things that you're looking for. They might see things in a different way, but you share a perspective. I found that when I have a student coming in and giving me feedback, I got totally different feedback and really useful feedback, you know. A student sees things from the perspective of a student, from somebody who doesn't know the discipline, doesn't really know what you're teaching, and can tell you whether you're reaching them through those disciplinary barriers or barriers of different levels of learning. And, you know, I had a student who, who just saw things that had never occurred to me as being an issue in my teaching. You know, one student who went in and he sat in the back of the classroom and afterwards he said, you know, the teaching, this was good, this wasn't good, but you know what really drove me crazy was the people who are sitting next to me and just chattering away. And then I realized, oh, you know, that's something I have to take into account too, is, you know, how I'm how I'm controlling the classroom, the space, and how people are interacting in it, and how that's impacting the learning experience of those who are listening to me or not able to listen to me because their neighbors are chatting.